practicals. Hmm? So we often see that you know whenever we are not having food for a longer time, mm-hmm. so we have this gastric trouble. Like we feel burning sensation, burpings, you know, blotting, and all these things that basically happens because of the acid production in our body. right in stomach we were talking yesterday that we have in stomach we have hcl hydrochloric acid hmm? if our food is we have the sensation how, when what are the timings we produce hcls it can be when we think of food when we smell food when we are ready to eat so it starts producing hcl or else we are not feeling to it but our time is like we often used to have our food at 1 o'clock or 9 o'clock automatically the hcl starts producing at that time so it's according to the time or the thought process we have so at that point if food is not entering food is not entering into the stomach we have this excessive hcl production hcl is there but it's not mixing with food what happens it just comes up like we have the stomach structure no yesterday we have spoke about the stomach structure like this remember yeah so normally it closes but when there is excess production of hcl it starts moving either to this side or this side mm. now we have a very good mucus mucus layer in the stomach but we don't have a good layer in the esophageal line we have but it's not that good as stomach mm-hmm. so it moves either to this side or else this side when it moves both the sides it starts burning it starts burning so what happens in the peptic ulcer the stomach is producing hcl but because of certain problems it starts crossing the mucus layer we have three layers here the first layer second layer third layer right the first layer is mucus layer what is mucus mucus yes so yes it's it's a white layer like you know when we have this sinus cold or anything we we have this mucus but this mucus is not only in the nasal cavity it is throughout the body in gi tract you have it in vagina you have it in cervix you have in the uterus you have in the gi tract stomach small intestine duodenum esophageal line you have mucus in your mouth saliva is also a type of mucus hmm so we have it throughout respiratory system a huge amount of mucus why they why it is all for the protection from the bacteria entering inside because it is very sticky mm-hmm. so everything sticks on it right in the gi tract it is for the lubrication for the smoothness so that food goes smoothly inside there will not be any problem so when food enters we have this mucus layer and also this mucus layer is specially in the stomach for protecting it from hcl damaging the stomach line stomach line is here so the mucus layer is here so the hcl cannot destroy this because mucus is dead cells mucus is um, uh, the hcl is not going to affect the muco- mucosal line but it is going to affect the skin line so the skin line to protect we have mucus now what happens in peptic ulcer this mucus line gets damaged it gets damaged now what happens this hcl now can affect the stomach line okay this mucus how can it be destroyed the mucus line mucosal line how it gets destroyed this gets destroyed due to lot of reasons okay so basically what are the reasons so for it the first reason is bacterial attack helicobacterius pylori h pylori hmm? it is called as h pylori bacteria okay. which <coughs> affects the stomach for the mucosal line which affect the mucosal line hmm. so it's very interesting to talk about the scientist who discovered it so helicobacterium pylori You want me to write? I can write if you want. It's a big deal. Uh, it's clear, right? Yeah, <laughs> the spelling, okay. <laughs> it's very bad. 
Okay. okay. <laughs> so, the interesting story about it, you know, whenever we get this acid reflex, people used to say, oh, it is because you are not eating. It is because you are, you, you are not taking your proper diet. It's basically, so we, we believed it for a long time, for a long time. So one scientist came, he said, no, the peptic ulcer is not because of that. The peptic ulcer is because of some bacteria attacking. Nobody believed him. <laughs> Nobody, everybody said, no, it's because of the acid reflex and it is because you are not eating properly. Then what he did, he started inoculating this H. pylori outside. He started feeding on it. He started feeding on it by himself. And in few days, he got peptic ulcer. He proved it and he died. No. <laughs> <Really>? Yeah. <laughs> so, so to proving that it is because of this bacteria, he had to feed on it and he died because of the peptic ulcer. So he is the discoverer, he is the <laughs> causer, he is the person who invented it, he died because of it. What is that story? Yeah. <laughs> so that's how it's been discovered that H. pylori is the reason for the peptic ulcer. When ulcer goes for a longer time, it causes stomach cancer. Mm -hmm. It causes stomach cancer. So the gastritis is the initial form of peptic ulcer like gastritis may cause peptic ulcer gastritis we'll discuss how this happens second second possibility of peptic ulcer is nsaid non steroid anti inflammatory drugs n s a i d so in pharmacies we have two sort of drugs one is steroid drugs, another is non-steroidal drugs. So, most of the time, whatever we have, let it be paracetamol, you know, we have a fever, we take paracetamol, NSAID. Any aspirin, the best NSAID. You know, you have any palpitation, you feel like, oh my God, I'm just going to die. Any heart problem, everybody goes for aspirin. There is something called a statin. You have cardiac block, dr the drug which is given for that, it's called a statin. Everything is, most of the things what we are using today as a drug by the pharmaceutical companies are NSAID. Can you repeat what it means? It is non-steroid, steroid, anti Anti-inflammatory, inflammatory okay. drug, okay. non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug. So, this causes peptic ulcer again. Mm. More intake of NSAID causes peptic ulcer. So, more paracetamol you take, you will get ulcer. More drugs you take, you will get because it damages the mucosa layer. Why you mostly get like other pills to protect yourself? Yes. Third cause. What is the third cause? Cause. Any injury, any injury to the stomach, you have an accident you have a problem with your muscles movement, you have any damages, it will cause your stomach to break this mucosa layer. Mm. So, in yoga, we tell, don't eat and practice yoga. Don't have food and practice <coughs> yoga. Why? Because the food is inside the stomach. It will take minimum of three to four hours to digest from, you know, making it chyme and putting it into the intestine and when you are practicing any kind of physical exercise because of that, the stomach which is using its muscles for digestion, it is going to rupture. So, yeah, any hit, any 
problems with your you know any um, stomach problems it causes the same thing now another thing food habits damages to the muscle muscles alcohol you drink more alcohol you, it damages your mucosalia second smoke smoking third excessive of acidic food you drink coke pepsi and all these things these are very much hypertonic hypertonic coke pepsi you know the the concentration of all the, the, the this coke and this have zero nutrition okay coke pepsi and ev, any cold drinks this has zero you use it as a toilet cleaner it will clean your toilet completely and you use it as a digestion it will clean your entire gi tract <laughs> including your important things important cells important parts that causes peptic ulcer so <coughs> how to diagnose it diagnose to diagnose it diagnosis is something how to identify that it's there the peptic ulcer is there right so diagnosis includes first endoscopy what is endoscopy what they do there is a pipe like thing a camera in front of it they make a small hole in your in, in your stomach they insert this pipe it's keyhole surgery they'll do insert it they'll rotate it they'll check they have a projection in outside in computer system they see the image outside they identify that is called as endoscopy next is biopsy biopsy endoscopy biopsy 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 is taking a small part from the skin or just taking it outside or using a swab anything why if you have microbes growing inside you will grow it outside if already this h pylori is present there so you take a part of small you cut it out or you swab it or something you do and it is a study where you do in microbiology you can grow it you can grow this bacteria outside and when it is cultured that means it is already there in your stomach if it is you are getting a negative result in the plate then it is positive oh sorry it is not present there so biopsy is done this is how they diagnose these things okay when you get a patient of peptic ulcer they might not be knowing anything they'll feel like it's still happening due to food they'll come to you like a food only but these are the various reason it happens and we have to find out what is the reason immediately we have to suggest for stopping that nsaid or maybe because of this bacterial infection we have to go under antibiotics uh, or maybe because their food or drinking habits are more towards the acidic part yeah so how does it show you so what does it feels like or what are i'll the tell you the symptoms That's yeah <laughs> so yeah so uh, there is something called as etiology then after oh, after after biopsy we do another thing called as scannings there are certain scannings available in the market called as ct scans ultrasounds x rays mri these all are scans this has different different various purposes and various procedures various mechanism principles uh, because we don't need it here so i am not talking about the principles okay so but it's very interesting to know all this uh, how this functions okay it's very interesting <laughs> stays epi uh, etiology etiology is something the term is used why it is causing why it is causing that is what we were talking about the initial why it is causing those are etiology other than that there are gene triggering if you have a, i told everything every disorder you have 
gene is somewhere responsible and for every disorder few genes are definitely responsible. I am eating the same thing, somebody from different part is eating same thing, they may not have the same problem. Why? Because of the gene. Because of the evolution change happened in me. So there are certain genes already present in the body, they are more prone to get it. So people from a specific place have more chances of getting certain disorders mm -hmm. even if everything is constant with the other person they are transferred to the same environment condition maybe a particular environment won't have anything but people from a specific place will always have that problem at any condition because their gene is responsible it gets triggered so obviously gene is also responsible symptoms coming to the symptoms the person starts first initially starts having vomiting or nausea nausea then burning sensation all the time burn then may have loose motion or may have constipation loose motion can be of more possibilities blotting production of gas inside the body blotting palpitation because this rhythm of cardiac palpitation so you know sometimes what happens we are sitting and because of acid reflux, we will have this severe heart beats. We can feel it. You know, the patient can feel sometimes, oh, my heart is beating very, very, like, you know, in a fast pace or something. But then it's, they feel like it's some angio problem, like angiogenesis or heart attack or something like that. But it is not. It is just an acid reflux. Okay. So you will have a chest pain or something will have a you feel like there is a huge cardiac arrest but it is not cardiac arrest it has nothing to do with the cardiac it is just the esophageal problem these are the main symptoms normally people have and they go to the doctor and they they'll be diagnosed with the peptic ulcer then lack of exercise it is basically happens if your internal muscles are not strong enough the same applies to the constipation, diarrhea, peptic ulcer, everything. If you lack exercise, it's not just about the limbs or something. Your internal organs has muscles too much. They are totally musculous. We still have bones. Mm -hmm. yeah? And here and all, there is no muscles, like very less muscles. But, but the internal organs is full of muscles because it has to move a lot. So when you do perform yoga, that is the only way to make it active. So every muscle has a, everywhere. Right? Active, activate. You do, mus you do any kind of exercises, it is not going to focus on your internal muscles much. Mm -hmm. Yoga has a property to concentrate on a specific muscles. When you are doing a particular asana, it is so deep that it is concentrating a single muscle at a point. That too, that too, that muscles are not only stretched or squeezed or elasticized, not in a particular manner, it is done everything. Because a muscle has a property, it has to squeeze, it has to lengthen, it has to twist it, it has to crunch then only the muscles are it's like you know you have a cloth long squeeze twist crunched yeah. everything you have to do with them then only it will become strong right mm -hmm. but when you do a particular kind of exercise or something it's a strain on it but yoga make it elastic stop there twist it stop there crunch it stop there and do everything and stop there maintain that position for a while so that the body get used to it and then you really relax it. 
so now my muscles perfect that's why we ask them to perform yoga why because it's it's totally affecting your internal organs okay yeah so gastritis is nothing but the initial initial part of this peptic ulcer like So, I'm taking a part of this is like our stomach. I'm taking this part. Zoom it. Hmm? When zooming it, it has this kind of cells in it. Nucleus. More layers. More layers more layers vessels blood vessels supply blood to this neurons supply nervous system then you have all this again few cells so these are layer mucosal layer a whole mucosal layer sub mucosal layer from where this blood vessel supplies energy blood and everything nervous system and then uh, epidermis layer which is just for the product protection Epidermis just to covering, just for covering. So, these cells, the first cells, there are certain cells into it. They are called as G cells, G cells, gastrin, which produces gastrin, G cells. Then there are a lot of, we don't have to remember all those cells, okay. We just have to know that what it produces exactly. So, these cells produces mucus. Few cells produces mucus, few cells produces HCL, few cells produces pepsin. Pepsin. Okay. Why do we need this many enzymes? Because the food we are taking, it's not just one thing. We have to break the bonds inside it. Every enzyme do not act on every chemical. Particular chemical acts on a particular bond. So we take carbohydrates, proteins, this bond has to be broken. So we have different, different chemicals to identify it and break it. So we produce this many enzymes in it. Then other than that, we have to produce certain enzyme to give the nervous system indications because the nervous has system has to stop or start the functioning, right? So. We have lot of cycles, cascades, that, that is called cascades, okay, lot of cycles going on here which helps to stop, produce because every time you cannot produce these enzymes, it has to be when the food enters and nothing we know, we are just eating, we don't know what is happening inside, right? The brain has to know, the brain has to know when to produce it, when to stop it. Food is not there, it has to know when to stop it. We should have that satiety centers. We should have, when the stomach is full, we should stop eating. Signal. When food is digested, stomach should produce, uh, stop producing the enzymes. If food is not received, don't produce. So, these are transferred through the nervous system. Now, gastritis is when you have inflammation in your mucosal layer and the HCL can enter into it, first stage. Then keep on entering because of that this higher version is peptic ulcer. It's clear I hope, okay. So we have pharmaceuticals, drugs for it or uh, maybe we have non-pharmacological as I was mentioning when you make this Muscles healthier everywhere. Lack of exercise causes peptic ulcer a lot because muscles are damaged. Mucose is not produced much in the body. So you eat kapha. I was talking about three things in Ayurveda. What are those? Kapha, pitta, vata. Now, where is this va? Kapha. Kapha is about the heart. Above the heart, we have kapha accumulations. Pitta is from the heart till the navel, below little bit of navel. This is Pitta place, Pitta. Vata is below navel. So now you can make out what will be the physiology of it. 
mucus, any mucus things which is produced, it is due to kapha. Any problem which happens in the mucosal layer, it is due to kapha. Anything happens in the digestion problem, it is due to the pitta. Pitta. Anything happens in the small intestine, large intestine, it is due to the vata. So, peptic ulcers. In peptic ulcer, pitta will go above because metabolism is high, acid regulation is high. Now, we have to reduce the pitta here. How to reduce pitta? By ahara. By foot. By pranayama. How we connect? You getting it? How do we connect it? So, we have now food. What kind of food should be eaten? Which makes our acidic chyme into alkalosis. Sorry. Which makes our acidic chyme into alkalosis. We, because already in our stomach, the food comes, it mixes. Now, it is the acid. The food itself becomes acidic in nature. Right? The food becomes acidic in nature. Now it has to be turned into the alkalosis. How our body does it? Beautiful. Oh my God. Everything turns into acidic. Everything is acidic now. I have to make it alkaline. Adding bicarbonate. Bicarbonate. What is the formula of bi? What is the formula of hydrochloric acid? <laughs> it's HCl, right? HCl is nothing but the hydrochloric acid. What is the formula of bicarbonate? It is HCO3. Simple. <laughs> you don't have to remember. You have to remember just some water molecule H2O, some carbon dioxide CO2, and some HCl, hydrochloric acid, and some bicarbonate SCO3. And one more thing, uh, salt. NaCl, that's it, done. We are not going into any chemicals other than this, okay? So, this HCl is basically H positive and Cl negative. Where do we get it from our, in our stomach? H positive from water, H2O. We drink water, from there we get H. Hmm? Water, we get H. Cl negative? We take NaCl, salt, from there we get chlorine, simple. Bicarbonates, how it is produced? Bicarbonate is produced in the body when we inhale oxygen, exhale carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide plus water makes bicarbonate. Only remember this, we drink water, we, we make carbon dioxide in our body, that is, that makes carbonate. Why we have to remember these two things? Because it is very much important in the regulation of al acidic and alkaline content in the body. Acidic and alkaline, which I was mentioning yesterday, the B blood pH is 7 point something, 7.3, 7.4. So, when we eat this food, it is becoming acidic. So, when it reaches the duodenum, this part is duodenum, okay? This part is duodenum. Here everything happens. The liver connects here. The pancreas connects here. Everything connects this part. Everything happens in this part. This is duodenum. This is duodenum. So, we have two types of ulcer now. What are those two ulcers? One is duodenum ulcer. Duodenal ulcer. Another one is gastri gast gastric ulcer which happens in the stomach. The acid problem, the collapse happens in the stomach, causes gastritis ulcer. The problem which is caused in the duodenum, we have duodenal ulcer. Clear? Any doubt till this? Any doubts? Any doubts? Are the uh, kriyas you can apply to reduce pitta? Think, think, Vamana Dhauti, you actually clean your duodenum as well. Till duodenum, it can be cleaned in Vamana Dhauti because you vomit and vomit, finally what you will get, you will get yellow contents. It's basically combination of acid and biles. 
Have you seen? When you have you done Vamana Gauti ever? Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Like naturally. Okay. Like naturally. Yeah. So it's because of the acid reflex. It comes the yellow taste. You'll get a very acidic taste mm -hmm. on your mouth. No. Mm -hmm. During the pregnancy and all, people get a lot of things because of the high acidic content in it. So it is a combination of acid and bile. It comes out of your mouth. In Vamana Dauti, it is diluted more with the water. It comes out. First kriya ho gaya. Second kriya. To reduce, to reduce, think what it could be, what can be done. Basti, yeah, basti can be done, but for the, from the deordinal part. Basti can be done, but it's not that effective because it has, it is the upper part, upper elementary canal, right? So, basti is for constipation. Whenever you have a constipation, the down part is for the basti. Whatever problem you have with the down part from the small intestine, you do basti. Yeah, because it's vata. It is vata. Uh, we will go to constipation. We have not reached. So, peptic ulcer. So, Vamana Dhauti is the best. Then, second asanas if we are doing. Asanas. What can be done in asanas? Sutra Neti. But it's very different. Now, only in peptic ulcer is not recommended because it increases pitta. In peptic ulcer, the whatever increases pitta has to be stabilized. Uddhyana also. also increases the metabolism, so it is not recommended. Surya Bhedana will not be recommended. Whatever is making your body hot potency, not recommended. Chandra Bhedana can be done. Very good. Sheetali Sitkari is the best one for the pitta. Pranayama. Why? Because it cools. cools. It reduces pitta. It balances pitta. So, what are the asanas? Any asanas for the stomach line? Yeah. No, okay. okay. Any asanas for the stomach, for the stomach linings, for the muscles of the stomach is good. Mm -hmm. Or just tell me a few asanas which are very good for the stomach linings. So very good. Same than yesterday, no? Yeah. Okay. Everything. The best. So, asanas are just going to make your muscles stronger. And the main part. What is the main cause of peptic ulcer? Is here again. More than physiology, it is here. Stress level. Meditation. <laughs> Anything you are stressed, whenever you are stressed, you will produce more acid. Whenever you are stressed, your entire blood is going to convert into acidic. Right? You take more stress, your more sympathetic nervous system is active. The vagus nerve, we will talk about the nervous system today. So, vagus nerves get activated. And today you are going to explain also why it is the same. What we are going to do now, next is, uh, where I was. Asanas, just think about the asanas, what, what can be triggering to the stomach or diodinum. Which one? Dhanurasana, yes, very good, very good. Chakrasana, very good. Bhujangasana, yes, then Chalabhasana, Vakrasana, Ardhamatsendrasana, Paschimotanasana, Padangushthasana, Pada hastasana, then all this are going to trigger your abdomen, right? Yeah, the muscles are getting stronger. Anything which is backward bending, forward bending, twisting, good. Everything is good. Hmm? Now, what are the pranayamas which can soothe in it? I have mentioned just now. Shitali, Sitkari is the best one, right? Brahmari. Everything we can give Brahmari. Why? Stress. Tranquilization. Brahmari you do. Stress reduces your stomach soothens. Getting it? So, this is how we have explained the constipation. What is constipation? Hmm? Think from one angle. That is, why, where do this 
constipation might be happening. There might be the constipation. It starts from the small intestine, it continues to the large intestine. It's nothing but the lack of water in the fecal matter. Lack of fecal, uh, lack of water in the fecal matter. So yesterday I was talking about, we have this duodenum here and after this duodenum, what is the place we have? It enters to the small intestine, right? It enters to the small intestine. Lack of water in the fecal matter. Fecal matter. Ten. Ten meters of duodenum. Oh my God. Ten meters of duodenum in a adult body. Five meters of jejunum. Five meter of ileum. Total loss, 20 meter length, just in the small intestine. You imagine 20 meter length in small intestine. <laughs> 10 meter in duodenum. So, what happens in duodenum? Everything happens broken down. Every part of the food is broken down into the smallest part in the duodenum itself. We, we know, we know till it is not coming into the small intestine, everything is broken up. In small intestine, the only function is absorption. What is broken already? So, duodenum's little bit part is continued to the small intestine, inside the hair also. In the jejunum, everything absorbs, everything absorbs, starts absorbing. Chalo, everything is broken down now, now I have to absorb from it. So, everything is absorbed, now what is remaining is just the waste product, waste product called as fecus with mixed with liquid, right, mixed with liquid, mm -hmm. yeah. But then we have a mixing of water and stool, then only it goes to the large intestine where all the water, water and stool, fecus, fecal matter. So, it comes here, now everything is absorbed by the large intestine. Whatever is there, large intestine has a capacity to absorb all the water. Now you have less water content in your food, large intestine absorbs the remaining. What happens? The fecus become more solidified. That is constipation. Once it comes to this rectum area, the fecus become very tight, the sphincter do not allow it to pass. We have a sphincter just above the anus to hold the fecal matter. It is, it has a capacity. It has a capacity. It will, it is voluntarily maintained. It can be involuntary also. I told you stress and all. It becomes involuntary. You cannot control it. But it is basically voluntary. What you do when you have a feeling of defecation, feeling of defecation, you make it broad so that fecus can go through it. But in constipation, this is not big enough to pass this stool through it. So what you do? You pressurize it. You pressurize it. You have this arteries, veins all over here to manage it, nervous system all over here. You pressurize it, it starts bleeding. You will get blood along with the fecus mm. because the artery walls are broken now. Longer daily, daily. You do the same thing, constipation person, patient, do the same thing, they will get hemorrhages, hemorrhages, broken arteries. More they do, they get piles. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Because of that it happens, right? Yeah. So, you think, what is the severity of a constipation? In the longer term, you have a constipation, just from the anal part, you will have hemorrhages and piles. Other than this, in the small intestine, you have a lot of problems. Hemorrhages is breakage of this blood vessels. And again and again, you hit the vessel because it has a recovery time. It recovers. First, it is any veins or arteries in your body. It cuts. It has a recovery time. But again, you cut at the same place. It will have again the cuts. 
again it, it takes to the recovery part, again you cut at the same place, again. So uh, excessive cutting at the same place again and again and the, you are not allowing it to recover, it will create hemorrhages, permanent breaking. It will coagulate, coagulate, coagulate is coagulation of blood platelets at a particular area it becomes a tumour, it becomes a tumour, not cancer, tumour. Tumor? Yes, piles is a protrusion of all this content which is caused because of this continuous attacks. Different piles, piles is all together a different type. There are now we have till constipation. Okay, now the constipation in the anal region causes this many problems. Other than that, in the upper region, it causes hernia hernia okay it can ca cause blotting because of that severe abdominal cramps severe abdominal pain severe abdominal problems hmm? it, happens in the large intestine it happens in the it basically hap like the entire thing gets accumulated because it cannot pass so it basically happens from the small intestine itself but basically in the large intestine and rectal area if there is an infection in the small intestine, okay. the water starts not getting absorbed. Okay, if there is an infection in the small intestine, the entire thing will be destroyed. It's okay. just not the water, the entire defecation system, gastric problem, entire thing will be destroyed. Yeah, uh, like the person is constipated, they are not passing, they are not removing their fecal stool completely outside the body. So what happens there, bacteria starts infecting. When the bacteria start infection, it undergoes a respiration called as anaerobic respiration, where it do not consume oxygen, but it multiplies. There is a whole procedure how bacteria multiplies, okay? There is a whole procedure. So whenever bacteria get food, glucose, it can directly convert it into energy. And there is a whole process when you keep curd, when either when you keep curd, lactobacillus, it is very good for a gut. That is also bacteria. But good bacteria, we need it. Probiotics. Mm -hmm. We have 300, 300 varieties of species of microbes in our gut. From mouth. Tilanus, we have 3000 types of species. So, different, different microbes, lot of microbes we have. We cannot survive without microbes. GI tract, completely GI tract from our mouth, Tilanus. You have any doubt? Just reverse of it? Yeah, yeah, please. I like questions. So, please, you can toss this really interesting in constipation. Oh, wow. I just love the diagnosis of it. <laughs> what are the diagnoses? No stool. Huh? Yeah. You might be, by this time, you might be knowing. You know, I told already vomiting and all, defecation problems and all those gastric troubles. Diagnosis, diagnosis, how you do, how, how you use your instruments to diagnose it. The first thing is x-ray, x-ray. You put the person into it, you see the x-rays, wherever this fecus is stuck, you'll see a dark, darkness there, okay, x-ray. Second one is radiological, like defecography. There are a lot of mechanism, lot of methods which can be done. What they do normally, I'll tell you the basic principle. What they'll do, they will either ask you to eat certain fluorescence molecules or else inject through your anal canal, the person who is having a constipation through the anal. This goes and binds to the fecal matter. Now it has a fluorescence. Fluorescence is something, um, okay, a fluorescence is something when you normally do imaging, normally do imagings, it cannot get the lights, you know, the imaging is all done according to the lights, the light mechanisms. 
but when you inject certain fluorescence into it, it will give a specific light which is identified some instrument, simplest way. It's, it can be of any, it has a particular nanometer where it excites, there is a whole principle behind it, yeah. So these are the fluorescence colors you get, these are basically, yeah. So you have a lot of fluorescence which gives, which excites at a particular point and gives this kind of lights, okay, emits out. You say that it's emits out those lights, it can be of different color. So normally in this bromium and all used, bromium chloride is used so that this fluorescence microscope, CT scans or radio act, radiography, all this detects these lights. So you will get to know where the fecus is stuck, mm -hmm. how long it is being done, okay. L normal MRI and all those works in the same principle, you will get to know where the fecus is stuck, okay, mm -hmm. and how long it is there in the earth. Longest? The longest it can be there for? For days. And after a certain point, if that is not, it has to be treated severely. It has, the treatment is, different different treatments are there, pharmacolo pharmacological treatments are there. Then you have lot of laxatives, mm -hmm. castor oil, uh -huh. yeah. laxatives. Yeah? What it does, it just relaxes all the muscles in your intestine. Go, enjoy. <laughs> There are a lot of drugs which are used in the same way, laxative drugs, which does the same thing. There are a lot of blockers drugs, which blocks and makes these muscles neuromuscular junctions very smoothened. Then enema, enema, modern, uh, mo modern way also in, in hospitals they do enema a lot when a person is suffering through the constipation or laxatives they use. In Ayurveda they have, they have discovered it long back both the mechanism. Laxative medicines, anima medicines also. They do it with basti, they do it with vamana dhauti, they, eat, do, they do it with different types of bastis. They have lot of ghee drinkings, lot of Ayurvedic const constitutes, which you drink, you go, lose motions. Anima, go. Anima is from the back side, laxatives are from the upper side, simple. What is this anima? Enema. Enema is something, um, it can be done with different different mechanisms. You have like 1.5 liter, almost 2 liters, they take liquid. It can be a saline enema also. You just mix a little bit of salt with it and then you have a huge pipe, a pointed point which can go through your anal canal, anal, and you can insert it. This water can be kept up and the person can be lying down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this entire liquid will be emptied inside the intestine. Large intestine will be filled and it moves to the small intestine. So it carries a lot of laxatives inside it, drugs, Ayurvedic drugs or normal drugs or normal saline water. When you are pressurizing like 2 liters of water through a large intestine, it just goes to the small intestine, the fecus become diluted inside it. Keep it there and then you defecate. Mm -hmm. Defecate, it comes out as a liquid. Mm. The entire stomach is cleaned. Basti. Yeah, so uh, treatment is done. Treatment, yeah, excess calcification. Yeah, very important point I forgot. Thyroid gland, we have calcitol here. Produced enzyme is calcitol, which is responsible for calcium regulation in the body. If your thyroid is affected, the first thing which is going to affect is your bone. Bone has high amount of calcium in it. Okay, it destroys the kidney as well. So calcitol, cal, um, if this enzyme is affected, the, cal the excess calcium gets deposited with the fecus. That also causes constipation. So if you have a thyroid, hyperthyroid, then that is also can be a cause of constipation. Okay, so thyroidism is, thyroid will take in the next class or some other class where thyroid has to be treated. Okay, so now coming to the yoga therapy part. So whatever we are going to do right now because constipation is because of the vata aggravation, right? And diarrhea is because of the pitta aggravation. Aggravation, getting it? 
right. So, Pitta is increased in peptic ulcer, gastritis and diarrhea. Vata is in constipation. Yesterday we studied diabetes, diabetes can be both, okay, diabetes can be because of the vata aggravation or pitta or kapha, three, if we have to diagnose it. There are I think 12 types of diabetes in Ayurveda, okay, can we just go to yoga therapy now? Yeah. So, yoga therapy, yoga therapy starts from the ahara vihara lifestyle and ahara what can be done ahara what you have any doubts no right okay okay fine <laughs> so ahara what can be done for the vata pitta what can be given for pitta more cooling food more alkaline food right so name name few food vegetables raw vegetables then Lemon is acidic. Yes, yeah, citric acid. So, if you drink uh, water and lemon. Yes, that because acid to the acid reaction. When you react poison to the poison, it becomes neutralized. Yeah. So, when you drink acidic citrus, so it becomes neutralized because of the acidic component in the uh, lemon. And even the curd is acidic in nature. What is the acid present in it? Lactic acid. So, more of cold. Yeah. What is the thing which we can have in pitta? Cold, cooling. Cucumber. All the varieties of cucumber. Bottle guard. Anything which is cooling. Buttermilk. Uh, curd is have a potency of hot. Buttermilk has a potency of cold. It's very good. Those people who are having peptic ulcer, drink buttermilk. No curd. Pep there is a difference between curd and buttermilk, okay. Curd contains fat in it, lipids in it. When it is completely, you know, broken, the fat is removed, the butter part is removed and the remaining water is called as buttermilk. That is cool in potency. It only has proteins and carb in it. Very less carb and high proteins in it. No fats. There is a difference, okay. You cannot dilute the curd and drink, calling it as a buttermilk because still lipids are there. Yeah, any doubt? Okay. But in the case of constipation, vata is aggravated, we have to consume more of fibers. Constipation mainly occurs because of the fiber reduction in the body. Fibers are highly in vegetables and fruits. Okay. Fibers. Lubricating, more of butter, ghee. In both the cases, we can take butter more, ghee more, then the virgin oil, coconut virgin oil, then olive oil, then the non refined oils. Any non refined oils are good. Okay. Then you have this. Um, Snigdhaha. Snigdhaha means uh, so, uh, rasyaha. Rasyaha is liquidity. More liquid food. More consuming, more of liquid foods. Okay? Done. And what also done? Vihara. Vihara is lifestyle. What are the lifestyles you have to modify? For which one? Yeah, for for Vihara, for, for both, for both. Just few, just name me for Yamanimas, which can be implemented in case of peptic ulcer and in case of uh, uh, constipation. What are the lifestyle changes we can do? Exercise we can do, which will come in the asanas. So, Yamanimas, Ahimsa, we can reduce the amount taken for the uh, the meat, if you are reducing and intaking of vegetarian food, mm -hmm. very good in both the cases because also meat increases the ketones inside you which is very much harmful in the 
pitta aggravation it acid will be increased meat or any non veg but when you are taking more alkaline food in both the cases it is good so that's why they call it as sattva ahara okay they call it as a nutritive food so more liquid more liquid food okay that, oh, sorry uh, then yama then second ahimsa then second is more into santosha stress constipation occurs due to stress ulcer occurs due to stress if your stress is you are more happy santosha is happy you are happy within yourself outside yes santosha sorry santosha it's happy happiness happiness <laughs> and so we neutralizing both of the things okay ishvara pranidana whatever you are eating you are eating for the god inside you so you will be eating good which is going to help it both of it okay tapa fasting if you are doing practicing fasting okay what will happen in pitta if you are uh, in pitta you cannot fast but in constipation you can fast you can go for a fasting then mm -hmm. okay and for pitta no fasting no because acid regulation will be high no no fasting in case of pitta peptic ulcer or this all these things you cannot fast yeah please what is the yeah for peptic ulcer what are the kriyas yes vamana dhauti you can write now pitas vamana dhauti then danta dhauti danta dhauti how do we practice here okay so uh, the, uh, like when we are doing danta dhauti there are five categories hmm? that is that comes again the cleansing so danta dhauti is basically you clean your karna your ears you clean your tongue you clean your pharynx completely two pharynx you catch that is nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal this comes under the danta dhauti so and how do you clean them sorry how do you clean yeah there is a whole process in yogic and ayurveda there is two different process to clean all these parts so in yogic property in yo in yoga we have like what we have like uh, uh uh it's like we have uh, the nostril cleansing we have we put pour water and clean hmm in no nostril and all and uh, kapalbhati is also one of the nostril kriya like but in specifically this this is different pattern but how do we clean this nasals and in tongue the there is a whole procedure in gherana samhita we pull the tongue we clean it because this the pulling of tongue is very important in yoga okay why because according to your age when age goes on the this um, tongue become smaller yeah and this you have this fre, fle, uh, what, what it is called as frenula frenula it is called mm -hmm. uh -huh. huh? this become more stiff so you will have a problem speaking later on your know, your stage once your tongue is done your entire thing is done it has to be so tongue is very important so and also in above like more thick it becomes it becomes thicker by more thick it becomes you will have lot of difficulties so what they do they pull they put a um, the like this you know we have this twitches twitches mm -hmm. to pluck our eye, eyebrows and all mm -hmm. they keep it they pull it and then they clean it with different different with things rash. no and they make a ra shaped thing where they does this cleansing they scrape it with sometimes with different different branches of the trees sometimes you know this coconut has a, when you clean it completely you will get uh, what is called the, you know the sticks in brooms mm -hmm. that is in the fresh form that is in the fresh form you clean it completely make it very scaly type and then you clean it you scrape it mm -hmm. 
so it will remove all the layers from your tongue that is the cleansing of tongue mm -hmm. okay and then you yeah main question i mean it is like is the kriya we, we can use the best kriya basti can we best. also use nauli we can use all the kriyas which increases pitta which is good for digestion mm -hmm. because we need the pitta to be activated more more digestion happens so all the digestion like we can improve still we can do the vamana dauti because it improve it, it balances the bile and pitta okay. okay we can do nauli mm -hmm. we can do vamana dauti hmm? and we can practice basti we can practice kapala bhati Kapalabhati Kriya, we can practice. Mm. Right? Okay. But if it's severe, you have to be very conscious with Kapalabhati and Bastrika Pranayama because there are a lot of limitations to both of it. Asanas. What are the asanas can be done in both the conditions? All the twisting, forward, backward, and in constipation. The best asana is Pavanamuktasana. Yes, Pavanamuktasana. Of all the digestive disorder, Pavanamuktasana and Paschimottasana are the best. Is this the, the knee to the chest? Yeah. yeah. Can you write this? Because I never. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's Pavanamuktasana. Oh, Very good asana. Peristalsis movement and then Parshava Konasana. Very good for the peristalsis movement. Then, Sarvangasana. Very good for the constipation. It completely crunches, jars everything, and very good for the. Good because it, it's. Uh, upside down, upside endocrine down. system activates there. Okay. Because Mula Bandha gets applied there. Okay. Okay? Very good for the constipation. The mudras, Ashwini mudra, Bandhas, Mula Bandha. For improving Pitta. Vakrasana, you can do all the twisting. I think they, they, Vakrasana, Ardhamatsendrasana, Navasana, Sarvangasana, Paschimottanasana, Janushishasana, Tiryan Mukha, Pada Angushthasana, uh, uh, Pada Hastasana, Pada Angushthasana. Ta. You cannot do uh, things which, yeah. you know, which makes the acid aggravated. No asanas are not limitations in both of the condition, but there are a lot of pranayamas and kriyas are limited. Mm -hmm. okay. But in the hypertension, lot of limitations. In cardiac vascular system, lot of mm. limitation. Nervous system problems, lot of limitations. But in constipations and all, you have to do more and more yogas. Yeah, especially in constipation, more movement. In constipation, more movement. more movements, and especially whichever activates the peristalsis movement. Peristalsis movement activates, get activates maximum when you use right thigh over your right abdomen first, and then you move to the left. Why? Because first you are, for example, in Pavanamuktasana, how it goes? This is the direction of fecus, right? It starts from here, up, transdense and descending. So we start everything from the right side. So we compress this part first. It pushes, it pushes up. Okay. And then we start for the left side. What happens? It pushes down. But that's why the twisting is always first. From first from the right because the entire body moves from this, 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 this. So always start asanas from your right side. For everything, for uh, when we will, when we will learn one by one, yeah. you will understand that how how systematic is our body and how asanas are developed systematically according to the physiology happens in our body. You know, we never jump into the last portion first and then go move to the begin beginning thing. Yeah. No, we always start from the beginning according to the physiology of the body. Every animals work in the same way. Every animals. And every animal is, 
evolutionary mutated according to that. Asanas, we have pranayama. Just tell me to increase uh, to decrease the pitta. What pranayamas? First, we will start with the Nadi Shodhana. Okay, we will always start from the Nadi Shuddhi. Okay. When we start with the Nadi Shuddhi, the second one is Surya Bedana cannot be given when Pitta is high. So, what we will give in the counter of it? Chandra Bedana we will give. Okay. What is the difference between both? Hot and cold. Left nostril is cold, hot nostril, uh, right nostril is hot. Ida Pingala. Okay. So, then second will be uh, Chandra Bedana. Third is Chandra Bedana is a modified version by Asvyasa. It is not in the literature of Hatha Yogas. Okay. Uh, in Hatha Yoga Pratipika, so only Surya Bedana is there. Chandra Bedana is not there. It is a modified version. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the third is what we are going to give is Sheetali, Sheetali and Sitkari in case of Pitta. Right. Why? To decrease the Pitta. See, you are learning Ayurveda and modern science together. You are speaking like to reduce the Pitta, <laughs> peptic ulcer. <laughs> so, in constipation, we have to do the opposite of it, right? Because we have to increase the Pitta here. So, what we will do? Surya Bedana. After Nadi Shodhana, we will give Surya Bedana. And what we will give? No. No, it's not about the Sheetali and Sitkari. We don't we cannot have to focus on the sheet. We have to focus on the Surya Bhedana. And then one more thing I told constipation can occur due to the thyroid problem. Right? Thyroid, I told you, because of the calcitol, uh, because of the um, regulation of corticoid, um, cortisols, because of the thyroid, we have the calcium. So we can give Ujjayi Pranayama. Ujjayi Pranayama in the constipation. Now you are getting how we how we identify the mechanism and then how we apply pranayama asanas on it. Yes. So we give ujjayi pranayama. Now both the things are due to stress. What we will give? We will give brahmari. In both the condition, we will give brahmari pranayama. In the morning they have, they learn the brahmari. Okay. In both the condition, we can give the yes the humming bee. Stress relieves. That is brahmari pranayama, right? Hmm? Now after pranayama, what we have to go for? Mudra bandha, right? So mudra, what mudras can be given? I told already. Viparita karni mudra, viparita karni mudra, right? The like sarvangasana, okay? Then, in both the condition, we can give Viparita Karni Mudra. Okay. okay? In the then, three things, yeah. actually. In? The three, like, Yeah, ulcer. both the condition. Like, yeah. three I have categorized into single one. The peptic ulcer, yeah. gastritis, mm -hmm. and the diarrhea. I have done in the condition. Yeah. But in the excessive diarrhea, you cannot give any patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> so, in Vata condition, in constipation condition, what are the mudras and bandhas can be, what are the bandhas can be given in pitta mula bandha mula mula bandha can be given mula bandha can be given and jalandhara because jalandhara ja, no Same. that is in the constipation oh, no, so sorry, yeah, sorry. this is jalandhara yeah, yeah. in this condition yeah. all the three bandhas can be given all the three bandhas can be given what jalandhara dhyana and mula bandha also, what are the mudras can be given in this condition? Viparita Karni Mudra, Shan Mughi Mudra because of the stress in both the condition, stress can be reduced and the third is Ashwini Mudra, Ashwini Mudra. Ashwini is a contracting of your anal sphincter. Yesterday we were talking about anal sphincters, right? So Ashwini Mudra is given when you contract your anal sphincter in a certain position. You have you maintain a marjalasana position. Yeah. 
-hmm. you be you remain in the Majalasana and then you inhale completely and then exhale entirely and then you start contracting your anal sphincter and you hold it there. Okay. That's is that's how it's been done, Ashwini Mudra. Ashwini Mudra. M maybe they they'll teach you. Ashwini Mudra. Yeah. Ashwini Mudra. We move to meditation. When then we will do, move to meditation. How meditation is going to help? First thing, stress release. In both the condition, we can do meditation practice. It releases stress, which help them for the ulcer or constipation. In both the condition, the muscles. Okay, there is a procedure. I I will just explain. There is also a procedure to diagnose it. The pressure, the pressure of the intestinal muscle. What they do? Through the anus, again, they insert a needle and in, in the top of it, there is a balloon, balloon. They insert it inside and they put a gas. They maintain a specific pressure. Okay. So, this balloon inside, it just, yeah, it, it fills air. But they can maintain, they can identify the pressure, what they are, pressure is measured in PSI. Okay. So, how it is maintained, the more, the only thing our intestine can feel the pain is extension pain. It cannot feel even cut is there, you burn it or anything you do, you cannot feel the pain. Okay. It feels when it is extended. Okay. Because the nervous system had that kind of thing. So, if you are bleeding, you can only see the symptoms in the intestine. Okay. But it is extended, you can feel the symptom. Okay. So, the pressure goes, the pressure extended, when you will get pain and all, they'll, inc they'll identify the muscular and neurological problems there. So, when you are performing yoga, basically, it is because I told already because of the muscles and nervous problem. So, when you are performing yoga, these muscles will be strengthened. So, when you are meditating, your stress level goes down and it is going to affect your nervous system and the muscle strength in your abdomen and acid reflex. In both the condition, you can apply meditation. Then final is relaxation. Both Makarasana, Shavasana, you can perform. How it is going to affect? Stress relief, first. Abdominal, in Pitta case, it will reduce the Pitta increase. It will help for the peptic ulcer. And in the case of Vata constipation also, it will improve your Vata. Uh, it will improve your pitta and reduces the vata. So, the entire body will be relaxed and it can be helped. There is a shloka for shavasana. Chitta vishranti karakam. Chitta vishranti karakam. Chitta is your mind, your thoughts, your brain. It calms down everything. So, it calms your mind, chitta, prana is regulated. Everything, wherever your chitta, wherever your prana is, there your chitta is. If you are chale chitta, chale, chale prana, chale chitta means more prana moves, more chitta moves. So, in pranayama, you are actually controlling your prana in a systematic manner. With that, you are controlling your thoughts. So, shavasana and meditation helps to control prana, regulate properly and your mind. So, stress level becomes down and it is very good for both the, all of this patient. Chitta. Chitta. Yeah, chitta, got it. Learn. The first shavasana is the number one. We give it a numbering. So, first shavasana where you keep your left hand on your cardiac notch and right on your abdomen and you just Feel the breath. Just feel the breath. Second savasana, which is given to anxiety patients especially for relaxation. You relax from your bottom, toes, tin, tin, one, 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 one. Normally people do it in yoga nidra a lot. Third is you imagine, you imagine yourself looking at you. 